Despite the continuous growth of modern launch vehicles offering greater payload capabilities, there remains a limitation when it comes to launching larger structures and station segments into space. This limitation has motivated various companies and agencies to explore the use of inflatable modules, which have proven to be a promising solution to solve rocket weight restrictions. To be more precise, we are talking about a remarkable, meticulously designed self-sustaining inflatable habitat. This technology has undergone rigorous development for over 30 years, and it is on the cusp of revolutionizing human spaceflight. Inflatable Habitats addresses numerous challenges inherent in sustaining human life beyond Earth's atmosphere. They present a superb solution for future orbital space stations and may very well hold the key to the colonization of Mars. Sierra Space and their live habitat serve as a notable example of this pioneering approach. But you want to know how life will be sustained inside this massive balloon. With proven concept module currently in use on the International Space Station, let's discuss the pros and cons of this technology, mainly what are the safety requirements for long-term operations and how Sierra Space is revolutionizing their approach in developing such technology. Subscribe to the channel and let's dive into it. You're watching Adventures in Space. In outer space, inflatable habitats, also known as expandable habitats, are pressurized structures that can support life. These habitats have the unique ability to increase their internal volume after being launched. They have been proposed for space applications to maximize living space while minimizing mass. As far back as 1960, the concept of the Erectable Taurus Manned Space Laboratory was introduced by Goodyear Aircraft Corporation. This laboratory, with a diameter of 24 feet, offered the advantage of being a single unit that did not require in-space assembly of multiple modules. It could be transported into orbit by a single booster, featured a deployable solar array, and had a life support system for six crew members. However, the main concern regarding inflatable habitats was the potential damage caused by micrometeoroid and orbital debris impacts in space. While small impacts were not a major issue for satellites like ECHO, they posed a significant risk for crewed habitats. A small hole could lead to a catastrophic leak, endangering the crew's lives. Combined with the high cost, this concern led NASA to abandon the concept and focus solely on the Apollo program for lunar missions at the time. Although the construction of inflatable space habitats varies depending on design objectives, there are common elements. These habitats typically consist of interwoven layers of robust materials like Kevlar and Maylar, surrounding a flexible air bladder that retains the atmosphere. The shape of the module is maintained by the pressure difference between the internal atmosphere and the vacuum of space. When discussing inflatable space habitats, we can't overlook the initial pioneer Bigelow Aerospace. Before the likes of Musk, Bezos and Branson, there was an eccentric billionaire named Robert Bigelow, who had a bold vision of venturing into outer space. Robert Bigelow is truly a fascinating character on his own, and in 1998 he utilized his wealth to establish his own aerospace company, driven by the ambition of creating space hotels. Bigelow Aerospace wasted no time and immediately began working on a multi-layer expendable space module technology, directly licensed from NASA. The TransHAP project, conceptualized for the International Space Station in the late 1990s, unfortunately faced funding challenges from members of the US Congress. Undeterred, Bigelow invested a decade in private research and development, resulting in a viable technology ready for a demonstration in outer space. In 2012, NASA provided them with $18 million in funding to develop Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, known as BEAM. By 2016, the module had been successfully delivered to the ISS and inflated to a length of 4 meters and a diameter of 3.23 meters, providing a pressurized volume of 16 cubic meters. Although BEAM serves more as a proof of concept rather than a fully functional module on the ISS, it remains inflated and pressurized. However, it is primarily used by astronauts as a storage area, with the door kept closed as a precautionary measure. 
Nonetheless, long-term studies on beam's performance have revealed its ability to withstand micrometeoroid impacts without damage, and the recorded levels of cosmic radiation inside the module are comparable to those in other parts of the ISS. Based on this limited test, we can reasonably hypothesize that inflatable space station modules function as effectively as their traditional counterparts. In the realm of inflatable habitats, Sierra Space and their Large Integrated Flexible Environment, or just LIFE Habitat, have emerged as a modern and highly promising option. The LIFE Habitat is designed to be launched aboard a conventional rocket and, upon reaching orbit, inflates into a substantial three-story structure with a diameter of 27 feet. To provide some perspective on its size, a single module of the LIFE Habitat offers a pressurized volume of 300 cubic meters, roughly one-third of the pressurized volume there is currently on the International Space Station. LIFE encompasses three floors that are fully equipped to cater to the needs of a crew consisting of four astronauts, enabling them to live in space and conduct scientific missions. This includes dedicated spaces for science laboratories, robotics workstations, medical facilities, sleeping quarters, hygiene facilities, a galley, exercise equipment, Sierra Space's Astro Garden plant growth system, and ample storage capacity for crew supplies. To sustain human presence, all the necessary air and water for survival in space are delivered by logistics carriers to the habitat and stored until required. The LIFE habitat incorporates life support systems that regulate air pressure, temperature, humidity and oxygen levels to maintain a suitable environment. These systems also recycle a portion of the air and water used, reducing the amount that needs to be consistently supplied. To solidify Sierra Space as an important player in space industry development, I should mention that it is renowned for its Dream Chaser space plane and its partnership with Blue Origin to develop the Orbital Reef space station. Sierra Space continuing the legacy of previous concepts like TransHab and BEAM and consider their live habitat as a flagship project. Sierra Space plans to integrate life modules into the upcoming orbital reef station, but these habitats are also designed to function as standalone space stations, self sufficient in their own right. Sierra envisions life as a modular system, allowing multiple habitats to be interconnected, resulting in orbital structures with vast internal volumes. Safety is a paramount concern for living inside a space balloon, considering the inherent dangers of space exploration and visiting alien planets. However, when it comes to inflatable habitats, the safety factor is remarkably high. Despite the soft outer shell, the live habitat is constructed using multiple layers of an exceptionally durable material called Vectran, which is a liquid crystal polymer fiber, similar to Kevlar. The fabric is woven together in a basket-like pattern, significantly enhancing its strength. Sierra asserts that, when pressurized, the outer shell of the habitat is stronger than steel. They have conducted rigorous small-scale tests, including overpressure and ballistic testing, to gather data on the consistency and longevity of their product. Based on the data collected, Sierra projects an operational lifespan of approximately 60 years for the life habitat. Even if the shell is punctured, it does not burst like a balloon, and there is no risk of being sucked into outer space. In the event of a micrometeorite puncture, air would leak slowly and steadily, and it can be repaired. As for radiation protection, the flexible shell of inflatable habitats lends itself well to effective shielding. Hydrogen is the best material for blocking radiation, which is why water is often mentioned as a radiation shield. Polyethylene, a plastic polymer with a high hydrogen content, can be woven into a matrix and layered into the shell composition of these inflatable modules, providing effective radiation shielding. This woven polypropylene matrix is similar to the material used in surgical masks to capture viruses. In a significant development, Sierra Space recently forged a long-term strategic alliance with ILC Dover, a prominent provider of soft goods technologies and spacesuits. This partnership aims to expedite the on-orbit deployment of cost-effective and high-capacity life inflatable modules, which will serve as a crucial driver for space commercialization utilizing the Sierra Space platform. 
Additionally, the collaboration between the two companies extends to the design of next-generation spacesuits for both extravehicular and intravehicular activities. This collaborative effort is anticipated to enhance and accelerate the advancement of the life system in the future. Drop all your comments down below if you think a space balloon can be considered a viable option for living and sustaining in space and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You will see us here every week with more updates on everything space industry related and if you like this video you have two in front of you right now. As always this was Georgie with Adventures in Space and I will see you at the next one.